Thank you, Anne, for leading us in prayer just now. Just a few announcements as we continue in worship. Firstly, looking forward to 2016. Now, there's a scary thought, isn't it? We have our away day um, on Saturday the 6th of February next year. Everyone from the Corps is invited. Um, we're going to meet at Dramatis, and we're going to spend the day there in worship and in fellowship. But we need to know numbers, so can you either let us know, or there's a sheet, of yellow sheet at the back, um, please write your name, because I think we have to let them know between now and the new year, so as soon as possible, that would be great. Now the family appeal is behind us. It was a wonderful week, and we are thankful for all those who helped in any way. Um, all the presents, apart from six, have gone out. Um, they'll go out soon but thank you because without volunteers we cannot do anything can we um, so it's good to work together that way Christmas Day lunch will be on Friday um, we have a retired chef come in because this is the first time in goodness knows how many years Nessie um, a well deserved break for Nessie for all those years of service but we have someone coming from Portadown who's going to help us because otherwise it would be beans on toast and our meeting next Sunday is half ten and that's led by ourselves we are on holiday from Monday the 28th of December to the first no, the 31st of December so there's not much left to say other than to thank you all for your welcome. It's been five months since we've been arrived. And just to wish you all a very happy Christmas and a peaceful New Year. Just be ready. And today we asked for your contributions. We asked for carols, we asked for prayers, we asked for poems, and we're pleased to say that actually there's a lot that we've received. So as our Christmas songs of praise... Now, we don't have Alan Jones with us this morning. I know it's a great disappointment. But we are here to come and worship. Worship Christ the King. Come and worship. And we're going to sing these words just now. I invite you to stand as you're able. To sing angels from the realms of glory. Wing your flights over all the earth. And as we sing this carol, we invite Ingrid to come and light our four Advent candles this morning. Thank you.
you, Amen. If you'd like to be seated. Luke chapter 2 verse 11 says this. Today in the town of David a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And we're five days away from celebrating the Lord's coming to earth. So I wonder what's left to be done. I'm sure everyone's got all their Christmas cards out. All the presents are done. Turkey's got... What's left for us to do? If you shout out, Philip will write it up on the board and this will lead us into a time of prayer. What's left to be done? The cooking. The cooking. And if anyone wants to come round our house and clean our house as well and do our cooking, that would be more than... Above and beyond, I think. I think the Christmas, um, the Christmas Day lunch here as well. Is that the presents or the presents? The presents wrapped. Sorry, someone's going to say some wrapping. Is there anything left? Yeah. Because we can be so busy that our focus shifts. Is there anything else? Anything's missing on there? Preparing ourselves. Okay. Can you turn that round so that I can sit now? As we please, thank you. That's great. Not too far, sit. No. That way. So that everyone can see as well. I know, but just just a just a bit. Can you turn it around so it's facing more of the back? Yeah, 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 but a little bit of both of them. There you go. Perfect. Do you want to come and sit down, dear? No, I need to move it. No, can you leave it there for a second, please? Yep. Can you sit down, please? Thank you. Okay. It's already been mentioned about the busyness of Christmas, isn't there? There's so much to get done. The cooking, the cleaning, the last minute things, the wrapping, the visiting, celebrating us for birth and preparing ourselves. So I invite us this morning after I say what we're going to do we all say, Lord Jesus help us to keep you at the centre of our Christmas as our prayer this morning. As we go about the cooking, Lord Jesus, help us to keep you at the centre of Christmas. As we go about cleaning our homes, Lord, Lord Jesus, help us keep you at the centre of our Christmas. As we get ready, the last minute things that are to be done in preparation. Lord Jesus, help us keep you at the centre of Christmas. As we wrap presents for others. Lord Jesus, help us to keep you at the centre of Christmas. As we visit friends and family and those who are on their own this Christmas. Lord Jesus. Help us to keep you at the centre of Christmas. As we celebrate your birth, Lord Jesus, 
help us to keep you at the centre of our Christmas. And as we prepare ourselves, Lord Jesus, help us keep you at the centre of Christmas. And Lord, that's our prayer this morning. As we bring you ourselves, perhaps not for the first time, Lord, as we prepare once again for your birth. Lord, maybe this isn't the first year that we've heard the Christmas story. We've heard the readings this year. But Lord, may we glean something afresh as we prepare ourselves to celebrate your birth once more. We just ask for your blessing over this meeting, Lord, and ask that we would go from here knowing that we've met with you. For we ask these things and through your name. Amen. If you'd like to move the flip chart, thank you. Now, one of the items that came back from, um, from the Songs of Praise was a musical piece. So it's great to have Colin playing. And remind me, Colin, what we're doing? Is it Away in a Manger? And we're happy for people to sing along. So the words will appear on the screen, and Colin's going to play for us. So if you want to join in, or if you prefer just to listen to Colin play, because there is... Um, yep. Jesus said unto them, I have already said unto you once, and yet I say unto you again, watch. And so he put his word in, watch, <laughs> once again. And I got his watch for Christmas. But I was reading some lovely stuff last night, a really, really blessed me, and brought us back to our focus uh, this morning. And one of the stories I was reading was about the three wise men. They followed a star. But the star led them to a stable. Sometimes we can follow a star and we can expect so many things and look for so many good things in life and we want life to go really well, but sometimes we find the stable broken. And yet, the wise men, what did they do? They came to the place where he was, the Bible says, and they gave Jesus their best gifts gold and frankincense and marriage. No matter where the Lord leads us, no matter what church he asks us to belong to, no matter what he asks us to do, let's give him our best. Amen. Or he will move on. Let's go into sing this lovely uh, carol when the major look out for again. And that's just where he worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh 
Well, I have chosen it's a poem, and it's not. It's a poem, and it's not really a poem. But um, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and I wasn't to know that the next carol is going to tie in with what I'm saying. And the poem I'm going to bring to you is, "What shall I give?" Now, it's not. Think about this. Please open your heart to just take this bit in. This is entirely different. What shall I give? You ask each year as Christmas days draw nigh. What can I do for those I love? What presents can I buy? What shall I give my feelings to express and to convey? For the festival of love we keep on Christmas Day. Now here's the bit. What shall I give, said God, unto my children there below, struggling in the dark, what gift of joy can I bestow? I will go myself, he said, as one of them to be. I will visit my creation they my face shall see. This will I do to prove my love and teach them how to live. More I cannot do for them and more I cannot give. I myself will be the gift within a human frame. I will give them Christmas to remind them that I came. And those words spoke very strongly to me because uh, we're always wondering what we can give. But you see, God gave us himself. And our next carol is going to tie in with that. And this was Irene's choice. And uh, I didn't know what Irene's choice was. We didn't know anything about it. But it's all tying in. In the bleak midwinter. And I think it's the very last verse or something that tells us what we're going to give. May God bless you. If you'd like to stand, or if you'd prefer to be seated.
All right, if you'd like to be seated. God kept his promise and promise, prophecies were fulfilled. And our promise this morning, I wonder why it's going to be. Are we going to echo the last words of that, that carol? Yet what can I give him? Give my heart. It's a beautiful carol and if Irene hadn't have chosen it, I certainly would. Around and about you should see a wow card. Now, I'm sure most people have sent their Christmas cards. Um, we have a Christmas card here. To officers and friends of Lauren Corps from Mrs. Kerr. And I'll place that at the back as the meeting finishes. It's wonderful to receive a card. I received a slightly different card this year. Um, I'll leave this at the back for you to see. This is a, the Knitted Nativity, life size, in front of the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which is in Bristol, where, where I'm from anyway. Um, it's called the Knitivity. But they only get worse, don't they? In the bleak midwinter also echoes these verses from Luke 2, verses 17 to 19. <coughs> When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told of them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. To ponder over the birth of the Son of God. I wonder what things we're pondering this morning. Hence the wow Christmas cards, the wonder of the Christmas message, the wow factor. I wonder what that is for us. So I invite you with the card that you've got, if you open it up, and everyone should have a pen. I invite you to write or draw, what's the wow factor for you? You can use scripture, you can draw. You might want to think about the shepherds who came. That the lowliest of the low were the first ones to come to hear the good news. The magi who followed for months, perhaps years on end, the star to find where Jesus had been born. Mary who treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. And Joseph... There's always a pride of the firstborn as a son. But what Joseph would have felt when the engagement was almost called off, when he, perhaps he couldn't understand, but yet he trusted. So what's the wow factor for you? We're going to play a piece of music called Mary's Song as we do this. But I invite you to write and draw, well, what's the wow factor for you this Christmas?
finishing your cards, Philip's going to come around with a basket. It's part of the Christmas is given. So you're not going to leave with your card, you're going to leave with someone else's. So the idea is now, if you can put yours into the basket... And as we exchange in Christmas cards this morning, maybe something that someone else as well factor might inspire us. And perhaps when you get home, you might want to place it somewhere prominent. You might want to place it near your Christmas tree. Perhaps on the fridge. Wherever. Just something that says about the wow factor. As we continue in worship, we're going to sing another, another carol that was chosen by Peter and Jean. Who is he in yonder store, at whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Please, God, and if that's okay, one, one last verse. Who is he from his throne? Rules and rule, the world's alone. Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. As you see, we come before. Amen.
What a great song that reminds us to crown him Lord of all. And uh, just now, Colin is going to bring to us a second song, which I believe is a Calypso carol. So again, the words will come up if you'd like to join along in singing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to stay here this time. Well, this is a lovely piece. And uh, yesterday, we, our last night, we were the service at And really, the crowd of the God was there. And then the people were singing, and people were really blessed. And I remember learning this when I was just reminiscing last night for the first time. And it was about the age of 12, we had moved to Lisburn, and I went along to music lessons. And they were quite a wee bit away, so I had to go on the bike. And I used to bring the guitar on the bike with me. At least I got a, carried the, the guitar and, and, and tried to steer the bike at the same time. And it's so fun in those days, I tell you, it was, it was lovely to, to think back. But this was one of the carols that I learned at, at that music class. And I was thinking, you know, the world doesn't make mistakes, does it? He always prepares us, doesn't it? For what's down the road, nothing will take us um, that God has not already prepared us for. And that's true for ministry as well, isn't it? God will always prepare us. Let's really worship the Lord. And this is a beautiful place. Let's just enjoy it together. Thank you, Colin, for that. Can we take up the offering now, please? Thank you.
Father, they keep talking about the salvation of it and the Father is in the Jew. And so, Father, bless us all we pray in your most precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving. According to musicmachinery.com, which is a website, and research conducted by Aaron Dorbman, there are 914 and 47 songs or carols that the Western world would associate with Christmas time. So there's a lot of songs, isn't it? 914,047. The artist with the most amount of Christmas tracks is Bing Crosby, who has 22,382 different tracks with White Christmas being number one. And that's not the, the number of songs he's recorded, that's the amount of times it's appeared on a CD. Last year, the UK's favourite Christmas carol was Silent Night, and I think is, is probably going to be in the running for this year's as well. And that has been recorded, as of last year, 19,941 times. <laughs> Christmas music is heard in shops from around the end of November. So it is clear that the Western societal society likes its music this time of year. So music is one of the many things we associate with Christmas, along with the candles and presents and cards and tinsel decorations and all the other things that we've spoken about. And music is noted throughout the Bible as being a response to what God has done. So this morning I'd like us just for a few moments to look at Psalm 96. I'm sorry, we don't have the words on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord before he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Sing, praise, Worship, rejoice. The four instructions given by the psalmist to the readers. And just for a few moments this morning, I'd like us to think about these opening few verses where the psalmist invites his readers to sing. This command is given as a call to worship. We have good news to share, as Jesus has done and continues to do so much for us. Psalm 33 calls us to sing a new song to him as well as the opening verses of Psalm 96. Our singing is to Jesus and is about Jesus. This morning we have sung our praises to God. We have sung of his greatness and of his birth. We have sung because singing is part of what we do. It is part of our worship. It is part of being in the presence of God. Our singing isn't just a message to the world, but it's part of our worship to God and our thanks and recognition for what he has done. I believe very much that God can speak to us through the Bible. And over the past two to three weeks, 
Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20 have come my way about three or four times. Last Sunday I was asked to read these verses at the carol service at St. McNissy's Church. During the week I was speaking on these verses at the Tuesday group and on Wednesday night I was asked to read them in a small service that was held at Moyle Hospital. So for me I believe God has a message in that passage of scripture for me. And in verse 20 of Luke chapter 2 we read that the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. I often wonder how that would have looked and sounded. Did they pass anybody on their way back? And would they ask some questions? Why are you so joyful? What's, what's going on? No doubt singing was part of that worship, was part of that praise. What is your song this morning? Is your song a message to the world of what Jesus has done? Or is your song a message of thanksgiving or recognition for what God has done or continues to do? Are you singing songs of praise, joy and rejoicing? Or are your songs of a prayerful nature? That perhaps this Christmas you will once again feel the love and light of Christ on a personal level as you come to worship him in the manger scene. Psalm 33 encourages us to sing joyfully and that is that is fitting for that is fitting for uh, for who God is as we we continue to praise him. We are on the receiving end of God's gift to the world. His son. We are on the receiving end. We can receive Christ into our lives. We are on the receiving end of meeting Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we do, we have opportunity to worship him, not just through songs and through music, but through prayer, through recognizing what he's done, through thanksgiving, through service. Mary said, her soul glorifies the Lord because he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. What is your song? this Christmas. For me, it is a prayer found in verse 4 of the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And it says this, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. And I think at Christmas time, as been said already, we get caught up. But if we make that our prayer, as it is my prayer, that Christ will enter in, cast out our sin, cast out what we've done wrong, and enter in and be born in us today. But not just at Christmas, but through the years. In his time and in his way, God will answer prayer. Because Christ came came to bring life in its fullness. And we are recipients of God's grace and God's love. We can experience that fullness of life which Jesus came to bring. So this Christmas time, let's be reminded that yes, through the singing, through the music, there is a message. A message of light coming into the world for each one of us. Each year in Melbourne, in Australia, there is held a Carols by Candlelight concert in a big outdoor theatre, a concert stage in the city. It's been going since 1938 and is currently, from what I understand, the world's largest Carols by Candlelight event. And last year they had around 13,000 people attend the concert. It's changed a bit over the years. I remember growing up and, and watching it, and it's adapted a little bit to 
to society, but it still attracts, as you can see, a great crowd, even children that everybody comes dressed in, in something uh, Christmas. You see the babies all dressed up in their little elves costumes and so on. And they have various singers and choirs and uh, orchestras, and the Salvation Army have taken part in years gone by, but they now also do their own concerts, which is also well attended. And the nature of the event is um, the, it's proceeds towards an, a charity called Vision Australia, which um, support children who are blind or have very poor vision. So they raise lots of money for that. It's sponsored by um, a well-known and well-established department store throughout Australia. So it's a very, very big event. And in 2006, um, they had three Australian singers on stage to sing the carol We Three, Queen, we Three Kings. And they had Hugh Jackman, Peter Cousins and David Hobson. And just now, I'd just like to show you that clip. Um, it's, it's just a bit of fun. It, it, you know, it's, it's just a moment just for us to, to relax and enjoy as, as we watch this. Uh, nothing really too heavy, but we can be reminded in the song of the, the message that Christ was born a king. And he came for each one of us. Um, so we'll just watch that. Now bear with me a second. I just need to, to work out the computer. Um, and then, as I say, just sit back and relax for a few minutes as we enjoy this clip together. Absolutely fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Hugh. Now, I'm just wondering if you have another one in you. Do I have a choice? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, well, I have one, but maybe uh, I don't want to sing alone. Can you help me out? That's okay. I'm here. I'll help out. No problem. Okay, what, fantastic. What can we do? Listen. What should we I, sing? I really like We Three Kings. The song we've been rehearsing all week. That's the one. Where there's, fantastic. There's only two of us. <laughs> That's okay. I've organised Peter know. Cousins, ladies and gentlemen. Would I let you down? Peter. <laughs> you didn't know it was going to be this, did you? We have not rehearsed the You're going to be a king, you're going to have a cape and a crown. You're going to be a queen, you're going to have a cape and a crown too. I have to talk to my agent. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think uh, as a king, I shall play the role of Casper. Oh. Well, I shall play the role of <clears throat> Balthazar. No, I think I shall play the role of Balthazar. Yes, you should be Balthazar. And, uh, yes, I think he should be Melchior. It smelled cool. Thank oh. you. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travel so far. Field and mountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. God most high Yes. <laughs> 
So as I said, it's just a little bit of fun, but uh, there's a message in there for us to take away that uh, as the kings went to search for the, for the newborn king, the Prince of Peace, so, so can we, and uh, enter him and welcome him into our lives once again this year. We're going to, uh, to conclude now in our final carol together. Uh, good Christian men rejoice. I'm not sure if that's gone back. There we are. That's excellent. That's where we need it. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. News, news. Jesus Christ is born today. Joy, joy. Jesus Christ was born for this. Christ was born to save. Anyway, please stand. We'll sing the, the song all the way through. Um, as our closing part of our meeting. Thank you. Good Christian men rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Give me heed to what we say. News, news, Christ is born today. Before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian men rejoice with hearts and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Joy, joy, Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened the heavenly door. Is blessed evermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now the earth will be the grave. Peace, peace. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting help. Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. Amen. And a closing benediction together. May you receive the Christ child. May you worship the newborn king. May you honour the work of his chosen servants. May you offer the gift of yourself. May you feel the love that came from heaven above. May you join the celebrations by Christians everywhere. May you be close to God now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. God bless you. And uh, Nessie's just gone out to organise a cup of tea for everybody. Um, so if you just hold on a few minutes, that will be brought through. Thank you. Thank you.